Hello and welcome to part one of our F5 Distributed Cloud Bot Defense for Mobile Apps demo series, the Bot Defense Mobile SDK. My name is Kyle Roberts and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Engineer with F5. In part one of our series, we'll be taking a look at the need for Bot Defense for native mobile applications and highlighting the key configuration options for the mobile SDK within the console. You might be asking yourself, why do I need the Bot Defense Mobile SDK if I'm already protecting my web endpoints? Let's get into it. The amount of automated attacks that target mobile devices is increasing rapidly each year and causes major financial damage across industries. Today, malicious bots are launched in droves to attack our mobile devices and apps where most of our online activity happens. Unfortunately for developers of mobile applications, many techniques used by traditional bot defense solutions are not supported by native mobile apps. As a result, if developers do not take precautions, their backend mobile API components can be exposed to automated attacks such as content scraping, denial of service, credential stuffing, fake account creation, and a host of others. Battling mobile bots is precisely why the Distributed Cloud Bot Defense Mobile SDK was created. In the same way that our bot defense leverages JavaScript to collect client signals for web, the mobile SDK does for mobile applications to provide data on the environment and user behavior, which is essential for effective bot defense. The Bot Defense Mobile SDK extends the robust bot protection capabilities to mobile applications in order to defend against bots, vulnerability scanners, content scraping, and other automated attack vectors. Bot Defense determines in real time if an application request is from a non-human automated source and then takes an enterprise specified action such as blocking, redirecting, or flagging the request. This powerful solution is designed to block nefarious bot traffic before it reaches your application servers and data. In our first demo, we're going to navigate through the WAP connector for distributed cloud bot defense and step through the configuration items to protect a mobile application endpoint. Let's start out by navigating inside of the distributed cloud web app and API tile within the HTTP load balancer. If we look under the bot defense configuration, we can see that the service has already been enabled and the bot defense region has been selected as the US. Now let's move into the bot defense policy configuration. I wanna call out the mobile SDK settings. By default, mobile SDK is disabled if the customer would like to use the mobile SDK, they can enable it easily here. The only thing we require here is the reload header name. You can obtain the reload header name from the mobile base configuration file. We'll show you how to download the base config shortly. Under the advanced settings, we have the mobile traffic identifier page. If you have configured the same endpoint for both web and mobile applications, which we'll demonstrate in a minute, this identifier allows you to do header matching to identify the mobile traffic from web traffic. We have a variety of matching values available to us as well. For a demo, we'll just match on the presence of the header. When you begin configuring your endpoint policy, you should have a good understanding of what endpoints you're protecting and why, based on the unique bot defense use case. In this case, we're protecting our login endpoint to prevent against automated credential stuffing attacks that lead to account takeover and fraud. We're monitoring any automated post and put requests into the slash login endpoint to detect this unwanted automation. We can also now specify an endpoint category and label for our policy to facilitate intent-based reporting. For our login endpoint, we'll specify an endpoint category of authentication and a label of login. Under the traffic channel specification, you can select web or mobile, but if web and mobile is selected, you must use the mobile traffic selector configuration to tell bot defense to look for the mobile traffic identifier. Finally, our mitigating action is set to flag for this demo use case. If we navigate to the bot defense tile, you can see the new mobile SDKs section, which contains mobile SDKs for Android and iOS. You can easily download these under the ellipsis for integration into your mobile application. Another configuration that's required is the mobile SDK base configuration. We can easily create the base configuration file by giving it a name, description, specifying the operating system, and specifying the domain of the mobile application as shown. 
Once the base configuration is generated, you can easily copy the reload header name and populate this value in the reload header name configuration we looked at earlier. Finally, we'll download the base configuration file and compile it with the SDK to integrate bot defense within our mobile application. We'll pick up here in our next demo and walk you through step by step some different integration options to get the mobile SDK working with your mobile app. Thanks for tuning in to part one of our Distributed Cloud Bot Defense for Mobile Apps demo series. Make sure to check out part two of our Bot Defense for Mobile Applications demo. See you next time.